Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I'll be taking a look at a wireless mouse that is business focused on the outside, but inside is packing some of the same specs as you would see on a traditional gaming mouse. This is the $45 Rappo MT760. Now, as I start unboxing this, a quick disclaimer that Rappo did send this my way, and they are sponsoring this video. So let's get this out of the, uh, the box here. And cut this open. Now this is the large version of this in the matte black colorway. The large and mini versions of this are also available in a light gray and pink colorway. There's also a pro version of this at around 60 bucks that will use newer, more power efficient wireless connectivity. And that also has a bump to DPI in the pulling rate. The pro version supports up to 12,000 DPI in 2K pulling, whereas the MT760L that I have here goes up to just 4,000 DPI in 1K pulling, which is still perfectly adequate. Now I'm going to set the mouse aside for a moment and just see what else is in the box here. So accessory wise, got your USB cable and this should be around six feet. And let's see what else we have here. Just got the little manual and then there is a USB dongle. Now this is actually the second USB dongle because there is one that's already in the mouse here. This is a mouse that supports being connected to multiple devices at the same time, and that can be done via a wired USB connection. You can have the USB dongles for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and this does also support Bluetooth, so you have a few connectivity options. And for this bottom port here, they do have other options other than just the, the plastic filler piece they have here. You can get one that will wirelessly charge if you have a compatible mouse pad. They also have a charging dock that you can buy, which would allow you to just set the mouse on it to recharge. And just as I was about to finish this video, the charging dock arrived alongside another mouse that Rappo is going to have me check out, the VT2 Max Gen 2. So if you want to see coverage on that, stay tuned. So the way that this charging dock works is there's a piece that you're going to swap out at the bottom here. Just pop the existing one off, and the, the one that they have here, you can see it's got... Uh, some contact pins in there for the charging dock to connect to. And that'll connect right to those two magnets in there. So that just hooks right on. And then when you're using this, you just set this on and it's magnetic. It's not the strongest magnets, but you know, if it's sitting on your desk, simple as that. So it doesn't come with a USB cable, this charging dock. You would just use the, the one that your mouse came with and what a lot of people tend to do is they'll plug the charging dock into their computer and then they'll plug the USB dongle into the back of the charging dock so that the USB dongle is a bit closer to the mouse just to have slightly better connectivity. Now, as for the battery life, this has an 800 milliamp hour battery that lasts up to 90 days. If you go with the Pro model, due to the improved efficiency with the wireless connectivity, that is advertised to last up to 120 days. Now, about a month ago, I had reviewed the Rappo VT7 Max Gen 2, which also has an 800 milliamp hour battery. And when I finished that review in the first half of November, the battery was around 85%. And it was only around December 11th, I believe it was, that I needed to go in and plug that back in to charge it back up. So that was with me doing a mix of 1K and 8K pulling on this gaming mouse, which is quite a bit more draining on the battery. So when they say that this thing's going to last a couple months, I do believe that you're only going to need to charge this a handful of times throughout the year. And getting hands on with this, it's not a normal plastic feel. Rather, it feels more like a rubber coating here. The, the buttons and the scroll wheel feel good. The, the buttons are also a bit quieter than the, the gaming mice I normally use. The, the side buttons are also a little bit smaller than your traditional gaming mouse, but I still have no issue going in and hitting those. And that side scroll wheel is also pretty easy to use. Now let's do a sound test of this versus the VT7, just so you can hear how much quieter this is.
And heading over to the software, you can get this to show up in the AHUB software that their gaming mice use, but you're not gonna have access to all of the functionality. So if you wanna access the full feature set of what this mouse can do, make sure to download the correct software from their website. I'll have a link down below. But you've got the ability to have different profiles here. You've got your DPI settings. Right now I'm just at 1600. Uh, parameter wise, this page is going to give you the ability to go in and customize any of the buttons on the mouse. So if you want to set any of these to be a specific combination or macro, you can go in and do that. Okay, so a bit of an interruption. Sorry if things just got harder to read for you. But I was going through and looking at the AHUB software that their gaming mice use. And to me, the interface for setting... Uh, keybinds up to, to customize any of the 11 keys is actually easier done in that AHUB software because you can go in, you can easily go do your basic keybinds, the extended ones they have, like uh, lock the computer, copy paste, and so on. Um, they got everything there for you, the combination um, and the macro. But when I'm over in their office software, when I hit one of these buttons, like I see key combination, basic function, but there, there's nothing here for a macro, so I would say if you're looking to go in and customize these keys, I, I would recommend the AHUB software right now. I would like to see this interface over on the Office version, but you do need the Office version if you want to get the full capability of the mouse with the other stuff that I'll show here in a moment. Um, you've also got the ability to adjust the Windows pointer speed, the Windows roller speed setting, so that's how many rows that this is going to scroll per scroll of the wheel. Or you can also set it to scroll one entire screen at a time. And then you've got the the pulling rate right there. I'd recommend setting it to a thousand. And then the really special feature that this has is the ability to use this mouse across multiple devices. So I'm going to be taking a look at that next, but you are going to need the software on each of the computers that you're looking to use this on. Okay, so I'm going to do a live demo here, checking out the multi-device functionality of this. So for my other computer here, I just have a laptop. I'm going to grab the USB dongle out of this. It's not the easiest to, to get out. I found it's best to go at it from the, the side and pull it out. I'll put that cover back on. Let's plug this in. If I can find the USB slot, there we go. And immediately... Immediately it got picked up on the laptop, so let me see here. I need to go to switch function, LAN mode, allow, give it a moment, and it can already see the desktop. So that, that immediately picked up the other device on my network. Now I want to do... Let's do uh, both the cross screen switching function and the clipboard function. So where do I need to move this to get it to show up on the, the laptop here? I have to move it all the way over to the left. There we go. So I moved it all the way over to the left on my desktop, which is over on the right on this picture. And that moved the mouse over to the laptop screen. Now I can also just hit this button, I'm assuming, to manually do it. Oh no, that just swaps the uh, the order of what side of the screen you need to go to move to the other device. So if I go back to the right here, I'm now back on my desktop. Or not? Where, where do I need to go? Okay, so in order to go back over to the other device, you have to have the toggle here for cross-screen switching function and the clipboard function. That, that has to be toggled on both devices, so make sure to select both of those options. But if I do that, I can now go back over to the other computer. Now I want to see the this had mentioned the file transfer, so I want to copy this. This is just a, a rough draft that I did to send a wrap over the video. I'm going to go back over to the laptop, and can I paste it? It's copying it over. Let's check the uh, task manager. You can see it's transferring. Got my network speed here, so this is over Wi-Fi right now, so it's not the fastest, but it's it's working. So right there, I was able to just immediately go in and copy-paste from 
my desktop, which is wired in, not on Wi-Fi, over to my uh, laptop on the network. So that that worked really seamlessly. Now I also want to check um, going in and copying text. So I'm going to copy my members list here. I'm going to select all, copy. I'm going to move the mouse back over to the left, and I've got Notepad here. If I right click and paste again, it all just went seamlessly. So I really like this. Um, that that's that's some nice functionality right there that I'm actually going to be able to benefit from to to boost my productivity. So yeah, I'm I'm really happy with the uh, the experience. Just just the initial experience here with the software. That is that that's really nice. And shifting over to gaming, I did use this in Battlefield 6 in the main game that I cover on the channel, Star Trek Online. In Stow, I did encounter some difficulties hitting the rear side button due to it being smaller and a bit further back than on my gaming mice, so if you're coming from a gaming mouse, that is going to take some time to adjust to. And for gaming, weight is often a concern, especially in FPS games where people are worried about being able to quickly flick over to a corner of the screen. And this mouse is a bit heavier than most of the modern gaming mice. It comes in at 103 grams, whereas most of the gaming mice that I've used tend to be in the 50 to 60 gram range. But I found it really wasn't an issue. In Star Trek Online, I have several abilities that I like to manually click, and that means I need to move the mouse around quickly to go to the exact spot on the tray I need to be at, and I had no issues there. As for Battlefield 6, well, sadly no mouse can fix your aim, but I didn't have any issues using this mouse. Overall, in the limited time I've had with the Rappo MT760L, I found it to be a feature-packed mouse that simplifies the process of using your mouse on multiple devices. There are of course other solutions out there like Synergy, Mouse Without Borders, and DeskFlow that can enable this with any mouse or keyboard utilizing your network, but if you're not wanting to spend money, or not the most technical person, Rappo is providing a solution that is very easy to set up, and with the two included USB dongles, that improved connectivity on two devices may help in some use cases. And while I'm on the software side, like I'd mentioned earlier in the video, the Office software for this did have some issues, most notably being the absence of macros for key customization. In order to set those up, I did have to use their gaming A-Hub software. Now moving over to build quality, the rubber texture on this is not what I'm used to, but it did feel good to use. And for the buttons, these happened to be so quiet on this that I had to disable the noise gate on my recording setup in order to get the sound testing done. They were coming in below the threshold for the audio to be picked up. And it felt awkward to, to use because I'm so used to hearing an audible click when I hit the, uh, the mouse button, so that was certainly something to, to get used to. And there was no creaking or any noticeable issues with my unit quality-wise. The only issue that I ran into was the side button size and placement. I have larger hands, and those being smaller made it harder to hit those buttons. Compared to my gaming mice, the side buttons also happen to be just a smidge further back than I'm used to, which furthered my issues as I mentioned when I was trying this out in Star Trek Online. But that is thankfully something that you can easily get used to over time, but with the timeline that I had to get this video out, I just didn't have enough time to get accustomed to it. Now as for the scroll wheels, the horizontal one on the side of this mouse actually came in quite handy while editing in DaVinci Resolve. It was an easy way to go in and scroll through the video timeline, so if you have a use case for it, then it's great to have. So bottom line, is the Rappo MT760L worth 45 bucks? If you need the feature set, I'd say so. If you're someone that wants a productivity-focused mouse that can handle gaming tasks, then that's what this does. You've got up to 1k pulling rate and up to 4k DPI both of which are perfectly adequate for the majority of users. Now, for any of you interested in this, Rappo has provided a 10% discount code for me to share for any of you interested in this, Casual10. Links are below if you want to check this or any of Rappo's other products out. But that's it for today. Thanks again to Rappo for sponsoring this video, and thanks to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. See you all around.